So in early 2009, myself and a few other students from the Mass College of Arts architecture program began asking ourselves how we could take what we were learning in academia and apply it to something real. Um, most often in architecture school, you do get to build the things you design, but they're at 1 40th of their actual scale. And for a group of us, this just wasn't enough. We wanted to do something more, something bigger, something real. And that's what pushed us to look beyond our curriculum and start researching design competitions. So as students, we started to think about the environment that we're living in and soon to be working in and hopefully helping sustain. So in my lifetime alone, the Earth's population will double. So we need to start thinking about how we're going to house an expanding population. And yet the American single family home is increasing in size. The average family lives in a home that's twice the size of the home that their parents grew up in. So we're dealing with an expanding population with increasing standards of living. Residential homes account for 20% of the total U.S. energy consumption, and about a third of this goes towards space conditioning alone. So we're heating and cooling leaky homes with oversized and inefficient equipment. So we need to think about how we're going to respond as architects, as engineers, as students, ready to grow up into the real world, how we're going to respond to this environment and these patterns and lifestyles. So as we were researching competitions, we were keeping all these things in the back of our minds and trying to find something that would give us the adequate platform to explore all of these in a real way. And that's when we came upon the U.S. Department of Energy's Solar Decathlon, which every two years challenges 20 international collegiate teams to design, build, and operate solar-powered houses on the Washington Mall. And what's unique about this competition is it's not just a single discipline approach towards solving some of these bigger issues. It's a collaborative process and engages architects, engineers, and you know, marketing strategists to determine what's a, a viable solution towards achieving sustainability in residential architecture. So the more we looked into this, the more we began to understand that as a single group of architecture students in our undergraduate, we weren't going to be able to do this alone. So we at MassArt started looking for other schools in the area to get involved with, and we found UMass Lowell's Solar Energy Engineering Program, and we approached them for a collaboration. So it was at UMass through the Solar Energy Program that I got to go to Peru to help install my first uh, solar panel or photovoltaic or PV panel. And it was a wild ride. The student in this picture is also on our solar decathlon team. And I went there primarily to work on a passive adobe house. And Johnny, who's in this picture, went down there to make a windmill out of car parts that he brought with him in his duffel bag. Um, I couldn't bring adobe bricks in my bag, so thankfully there was enough mud there. But it was, it was an experience that we realized there's some things that you can't prepare for, and there's some things that you can only learn by working on a real project, an actual project with community involvement, and the community helped us so much in Peru. So I left this experience wanting desperately to work on a project in my community and see, figure out more about the design, the install, the testing of a solar project here. And all the students at UMass shared this desire to see how we would fit into and help and learn from our sustainable community locally and nationally. So when Spencer approached us at UMass, we shared his enthusiasm for this project. We partnered up as Team Massachusetts. And over the next year and a half to two years, we would not only collaborate with each other as students, but we would also collaborate with our community partners, the industry professionals that helped us along the way. And, and those partners would prove to be invaluable to our project and, and to our learning. So it was out of this collaboration that we developed the idea for our project that we call the 4D Home. And the 4D home is really a prototype for a net zero, highly efficient, very compact, adaptable house for a New England family. So under the parameters of the competition, we're working with a very, very small residential project. It's less than 1,000 square feet. And our goal was to try and pack into this 1,000 square feet as much program as we could. So you think about the needs of a family as they change over time, from the moment when they first buy a home to eventually as they age and their needs change, they move out of the home or they have to do something different with it. So our approach was why take something that's static? Why invest in a home that has solid walls and a fixed program when you know that eventually your kid is going to move out, they're going to go to college, eventually you will age and get old. And so our premise is the interior arrangement of this house can be adaptable. It can be dynamic, hence 4D. So for example, 
the interior partition separating the kid's bedroom from the dining space can easily slide out of the way and allow that dining space to serve in a, in a greater function. So let's say you're having Thanksgiving dinner, but your house is only 945 square feet. Like you need that space to accommodate those family activities. Similarly, in the master bedroom, which adjoins the living room, that wall also slides. So if you're having a large gathering and you want to entertain people for a moment, or let's say you don't need that extra bedroom, you can simply reconfigure your house to adapt to your own needs. So this is kind of the, the principle that we're working with here, is how do, you, how do you accommodate for the user need over a span of time, and how do you integrate that with the architecture? But beyond just the interior flexibility, we're also really concerned with energy efficiency. And that led us to what's called the passive house criteria. So passive house employs passive strategies to reduce the energy consumption of this building by 90% compared to a typical residential building of equal size. So again, this is before any active systems. And this is employed primarily through properly designed passive solar heat gain so that you're harnessing the sun's energy seasonally, a super insulated envelope so that in New England you're containing that, and an airtight construction. And what this allows for is a house that, on the coldest of winter nights in New England, can be heated passively, and any active component can be made up with the energy required for a single hair dryer. So that's pretty amazing, and passive house standards have driven a lot of our design. So let's move from the interior and talk about the exterior and the solar panel array, or the PV array, um, the heart of the home. Uh, when I went to my first solar decathlon competition in 2009, I noticed that a lot of the homes that did well and were innovative had huge PV arrays, up to 8 or 11 kilowatts, and the houses cost up to $1,000 per square foot for an 850-square-foot home. So we wanted to go beyond the competition and think of the homeowner. And by meeting passive house criteria, we could keep our PV array down to 6.5 kilowatts and our house down to $250 per square foot. But we wanted to further maximize the economic benefit of our PV panels. They're expensive. No matter how, how way I'm going to describe it, they're expensive. So we decided to leverage both schools, and we saw this as an opportunity to really collaborate on the trellis design and on the PV array design. So we mounted all of the solar panels on a southern face, uh, south-facing trellis that sits above the roof. And this allows for natural convective cooling of the PV, PV panels as air flows beneath them. And this increases their efficiency. We also pulled the trellis out from the wall so that the PV panels themselves could act as a shading device and shade the southern windows in the summer to reduce our summer cooling loads. So we wanted to really focus on innovation through simplicity, through the use of a singular element for multiple functions, and also through energy efficiency and heat recovery. So behind six of these PV panels are hybrid solar hot water panels. And these panels, water flows um, underneath the PV and absorbs heat in the PV cell, which otherwise would have contributed to inefficiencies in that cell. And it transfers this heat to hot water to meet your domestic hot water load. And in really hot and humid days, the excess solar hot water produced by this system will actually extract moisture from your home in a desiccant dehumidifier. So we're BTU detectives, we're on the hunt for lost energy, lost heat, and we're really trying to recover some of that. So what happens after the competition? Um, it would be a great victory for us to do well in the competition, um, but even more, we would like to see a family really move into the home and use it as, as it's intended to be used. And we'd also like to see how all the equipment performs. So that's what will happen after the competition. A client will move in and intend and use the home as it's intended to be used to foster sustainable living and also to adapt to the family over time and throughout their lifetime. So thank you so much.